Sono lieto di poter rievocare in poche parole le esperienze delle prime trasmissioni radiotelegrafiche a grandi distanze da me felicemente eseguite attraverso l'oceano atlantico il 12 dicembre 1901. Holy snapping bra straps! It's a podcast. <laughs> Republic of Avalon Radio. It's zero hours, Avalon Standard Time. Hi, this is B calling from Baltimore, Maryland, and I wanted to call to say that I'm really looking forward to coming up and seeing you guys, and I can't wait to uh, help decorate Fiddler's Cottage, and so I hope I will be seeing you soon. And I wanted to wish you both a very Merry Christmas. So I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi, Jim. It's Liam Slim here from UK. I've been listening to the roar on my MP3 player while in the gym on the treadmill. And I discovered as soon as the roar comes on, my heart rate drops by 20 beats per minute. So I think it's official the roar can actually make you fitter. Speak to you soon. Bye. Hi, this is Mike Fuzzboom from Vienna, Austria. Just letting all of you know that you are with the roar. Public of Avalon Radio, you're with The Roar, I'm Jim Fiddler, and welcome everybody to episode 24 of The Roar. This is the pre-Christmas episode. We have Lillian in the house. Hello, everybody. Yo-ho. Yo-ho, and a bottle of rum. Okay, well, we got a great show for you this week. We've got Jackie Sullivan, uh, a singer-songwriter from the southern shore of uh, the, the Republic of Avalon. I have a chat with her, we play a couple of cuts from her CD, and we came up with the idea... Why don't we do this? Why don't we have her uh, play a song? And uh, uh, seeing as we have a recording studio here, we'll record it. And then uh, this, this, of course, is a song I never heard before. So uh, she could just go on her way. And uh, I would accompany her on neighboring tracks thereafter. So we did that. So we have a song that we're going to play that uh, Jackie wrote that's never been heard before. Uh, but for here on The Roar. And what a gorgeous song it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so look forward to that. We've got the uh, Pod Save for Peace song, If Every Day Were Christmas. And uh, do get over and download that song. It's 99 cents to download the song. All proceeds are going to UNICEF. We're trying to raise money for UNICEF. So get on over to www.podsafeforpeace.org and uh, download the song. Spread the word about it. Um, email everybody in your address book and uh, uh, let them know that such a thing exists. It was a great project. Uh, Slough in uh, New York City co-wrote the song and uh, it was an international recording project. People from Australia to oh, to Germany, to Italy, the UK, uh, Toronto, Vancouver, all, uh, all over America and even the Republic of Avalon. I was part of that project as well. We all donated our time and basically sent all our vocal tracks in. And I hope you enjoy that. We also have Eddie Mailbag drops in to read us a, a little article. And you should find that entertaining as well. But uh, before we do any of that, let's just have a little look. Uh, some of you have been voting for us at Podcast Alley. And uh, thanks a million for voting. We are currently at about number 150 out of... Uh, 12,000 podcasts, I think. Mm -hmm. There's about yeah. 12,000 podcasts uh, all over the world. And out of out of those 12,000 podcasts, we are number 150. So uh, thanks a million to everybody who, who has voted. Your vote does count. And uh, ooh, that, that reminds me of another one. Feudalism. It's your count that votes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... 
There you go. And our numbers. Some of you have been spreading the word about the roar. Uh, our numbers are. What, what's our current? Uh, Nine thousand five hundred and fifty. One or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, actually, it was ninety five fifty eight. Was it okay? Yeah, <laughs> nine thousand five hundred and fifty eight Republic of Avalon radio listeners. Yeah. So we're uh, we're zooming in on ten thousand by Christmas. Mm-hmm. That's what we're hoping for. Yep. So those of you who have been spreading the word, thanks. Your efforts are paying off. And uh, for those of you who are new on board, welcome aboard, by the way. Um, but if you like what you hear, please spread the word. Let's get 10,000. So episode 25 next week, uh, we hope to be able to welcome 10,000 people into the fold. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it's always good to uh, get the feedback, too, in um on Podcast Alley, people have been leaving comments when they vote, which is very nice. Yeah, when you when you cast your vote in Podcast Alley, you can actually leave a comment there, which is really cool. Same with the Frapper map. You can upload a picture of yourself there if you want, or a picture of your village or town or city. It's so nice to, to see where people are from, actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, all these little pins in the map all over the world. We've got uh, people in Australia and... Uh, California, Germany, um, Belgium. All over. UK. Yep. Um, why don't we just, before we push on with the show, why, why don't we just read a couple of, uh, I think we got some comments there that people have left in over at Podcast Alley. Yeah. Um, actually, one just came in within the last 10 minutes or so. Okay. And it's, um, we know who this is, is Bay Girl Music. And that's Colleen Power. ColleenPower.com. She was on The Roar a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah, and uh, she just says, The Roar rocks. Woohoo. <laughs> well, that's partially due to you, Colleen, because uh, you've, you've been on it a few times now. So uh, you've certainly contributed to that uh, rockage. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, we've got also Kevin Doucet, who's been listening, uh, I think, from the very beginning, hasn't he? And he got a damn t shirt. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, and he says, I love this podcast. So thanks, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's a great supporter of the Roar. And, mm-hmm. uh, roar. He's, he's put a picture up on... Um, of him wearing his Roar t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, with a patch over his eye. It's yeah. Like it was around Halloween, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it was indeed. I've got my Roar shirt on here tonight, actually. Yeah, you do. I'm roaring. It's very uh, stylish. Very stylish, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and who else? Uh, um, I'll just I'll just kick back here, and you just read those things. Okay, so this one is from Ra- uh, Rathian. Rathian. And this person says, "This is an awesome show. The work behind the podcast is very nicely done, producing a well presented end product." Yay! Yay! Thank you. And next one is excellent job. A breath of fresh air, radio as it was supposed to be. <laughs> and that's from Bill Tucker. Thanks, Bill. Bill Tucker, that's a very kind of uh, Republic of Avalon sort of name. It kind of is. Put a pin in our Frapper map, Bill, please, yeah, at republicofavalonradio.com. Go over and put yourself in there. Okay, I'm clicking down through the uh, comments right now. She's clicking down through the comments there, no? This one is from Mark Gravel. Who's that? Who's that? It's, it, he's a singer-songwriter that was here in June. Really? Yeah. <laughs> one of them cork fellas. <laughs> one of them cork fellas, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding you, Mark. Mark, it's so good to see you uh, that you're listening to the show. That's way cool. Very cool. You're going to have to give us a shout, Mark. Call the Roar Line. Uh, the number's uh, country code 1, area code 724 Four two six eight one seven six, and give a shout out to anyone you like, um, your fans, uh, fellow listeners, to the roar, uh, whatever. And that goes for anybody, really. Uh, of course, next week is the Christmas uh, special, so we want to hear from as many of you as possible. Call the roar line, drop us an email. If you uh, re- say record an MP3 or something like that, just send it to uh, Republic of Avalon Radio at gmail dot com, and just attach it to the email, and we'll play it on the air for you. Yeah, we want to have all kinds of uh, you know 
good wishes and uh, send outs and happy Christmases and Hanukkahs and everything. Everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, great to hear from you, Mark, and hope uh, things are going well for you there in uh, Liverpool. Excellent podcast. That's uh, Yves Suzanne. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Et, uh, je pense que vous êtes uh, au Canada, mais je ne suis pas sûr. Mais merci, merci beaucoup. Et bisous. 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 <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a big thank you. And, and, and a kiss to uh, Eve Suzanne. Thanks for listening. Yes. And the next one is uh, entitled Quality. This is an excellent example of the quality of podcasts. This particular show will be a benchmark in the future. And Uh-oh. It's, uh oh. <laughs> Mejerizo. Thank you very much, uh, Mejerizo. <laughs> Majarizo. Mejerizo. Majarizo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much and uh, drop on over to the Frapper map, stick a pin in and uh, let us know who you are and where you are. We're most interested in where people are. It's it's great to see all of that. Mm-hmm. Next. Okay, the next one is from Nancy White and she's in British Columbia. Nancy White, she's out of sight. Nancy White is out of sight. Her petticoat needs a border. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Roar is a great podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, then what are you waiting for? Exactly. That's what I say. Yeah. And thank you, Nancy. You've been really great. Good supporter, for sure. She's a number one Roarette. Absolutely. Yes. She's uh, been over to jimfiddler.com and bought, uh, I think, my, my latest CD, uh, Midnight Rover. And as well, she's gone over and clicked on the PayPal button on republicofavalonradio.com. And thrown into the tip jar, as as uh, some of you, as most of you know, some of you may not. Uh, we are entirely sponsor free here, and uh, we are listener supported. So every little bit counts. And Nancy went over and dropped into the tip jar, and we really, really appreciate that, Nancy. Thank you, mucho, mucho, mucho. Yes, very much appreciated, <coughs> and nice to see you in the forum as well. Bisous à toi aussi. Oui. <laughs> and the next one is. Uh, Great forward thinking. And it says, I send my accolades to anyone who has the ability to get my mind going like Jim does. Woohoo. There you go. Is that, isn't that in Australia, accolades? <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> or is it in Alaska? Uh, <laughs> accolades, Alaska? Or, I don't know. <laughs> that big mountain. Uh huh. And that was from. That's from <coughs> Sean K. Sean K. Well, thank you, Sean K. That would be Mr. Quackaboom, I bet. Oh, okay. So, uh... That's an interesting name. Big yo at you, Sean. And uh, we'll have to have that geek session sometime now in the new year. Sean and I are planning on getting together and just uh, sitting at the kitchen table and having a bite of lunch and a cup of coffee and just talking about all things geek. That's right. Yeah. That'll be very interesting. Uh Uh-huh. Um, okay. What else we got there? If you have... If you heard these podcasts, you'd you'd know why I voted for the Roar. And that's just from Mike. Thank you, Mike. Whoever you are, wherever you are. Uh, Mike, somebody from somewhere. Again, let us know Let us know who you are. Yeah, drop in uh, to the frapper and let us know. Put your pin in the map and let us know who you are. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Mike will do for now. and uh, you know, Mike is good. Mike is good. <laughs> Great podcast. I vote for Republic of Avalon Radio. It's absolutely fantastic. Always informative and always entertaining. Best hour on the air. And that's by Anne. Anne in Philly. That that would be our good friend Anne, who is the chief cook and bottle washer over at uh, Fiddler's Pub, which is our forum. And you can also get to that. You can get to that at uh, republicofavalonradio.com. A lot of good folks over there, so drop on over and say hi. Yeah, say hi to Anne, too. She's very friendly, and she'll just make you feel at home. She'll take care of you, yeah. And uh, she, the Guinness and the Smittics are always poured perfectly. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, great podcast. I especially love the sound scene. And that's by Four Kestrel. Four Kestrel. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Four Kestrel. Thank you, Four Kestrel. Yes. That's like four orchestras playing at the same time. 
Would that be what that is? That could be. Cool. No, there's something behind that. That name. There is. I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe they'll put a pin in the map and let us know. All righty. Uh, what else we were were we going to have a look at? That's uh, we should we should probably move on. Yeah, I think so. What what else do we did we have there? Uh, we were going to take a, just a jaunt over. Quick to look at the Frapper, Frapper map. Yeah. Let's let's, let's do. Let's okay. Do. Um, <clears throat> there's a really cute one here that I wanted to read. Uh, okay. It's from Jim, and he says we want to do a podcast too from the Republic of Minnesota podcast. R O M P. Ramp. <laughs> We'll romp and we'll roar. <laughs> hey, that's it. We can we can do a, a we can we can pair up, Jim, Jim and Jim, and we can <laughs> sing. We'll we'll romp and we'll roar like true podcasters. I like it. Yeah, cool. That's brilliant. We just got one actually in the last half hour uh, from Sherry Nelson from Philadelphia. Okay, and she says, "Yo, Newfoundland, did you know that Philly has mummers too?" We we sure did. Yeah, you guys have a big uh, mummers parade down there. Yep. Which is kind of neat. And I don't know, well, I guess there are maybe in... <laughs> what would Frank Zappa there? would make of that? What? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just carry on. I missed it. I don't okay. know what you said. Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, Mario Danilo. He's from Newfoundland. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Mario. He's one of the... Uh, Outer Cove Danilo, Danilo's, no, no doubt. You always say that, but <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, he's coming home to St. John's for Christmas, so Mario. Hey, that's super, Mario. <laughs> super, Mario. <laughs> Mario, if you happen to be down at Aaron's Pub, uh, or if you want to drop down, that's usually our hunt. Yes, and I'll be playing down there on the 27th, just so that you all know. going to do one performance, so... Those of you who will be visiting the Republic of Avalon this Christmas, um, the night of the 27th, which of course is, you know, the day after Boxing Day, uh, you've been eating all kinds of turkey and doing all that hanging around the house thing. Well, the 27th is a good time to kind of put your toe back out into the world again. And Aaron's Pub is a good spot to do that because uh, it's very civilized. and uh, Yeah, you can talk there. You can actually talk there and it'll just be me and my guitar and maybe my low whistle and doing a couple of sets of material and if you do come down uh, there's no cover no cover charge it's free to get in and uh, i will have we will have uh, cds on hand in case you uh, want to get a last minute christmas gift or two so you just see lillian about that but come on down if you're in town and uh, don't be shy come over and say hello to lillian and myself we won't we won't bite you um jim might no i won't <laughs> bite anybody no I'll only kiss and hug and shake hands with people. <laughs> That's it. Yes, this is true. Yes. Uh, he's very friendly and yes. I'm easy, but I'm not cheap. <laughs> yes. We've got Kai, Kai, who sent in a, a message last week. He's in California. Yep. What does Kai say? He just he doesn't say anything actually. He just put his pin in the map. Good thing his last name isn't Bosch. Kai Bosch. <laughs> <laughs> Kai Bosch. No, that would probably would not be. Might be uh, one of those names like boy named Sue, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Kai, for for dropping in there, and uh, and thanks for the message last last week. You can send us a message anytime. That was so well done. Yeah. We've got uh, Michael Merrigan from Bien. Leuven. Leuven is it? Bien tiré. What? Michael Merrigan from Leuven. Yeah, in Belgium. Belgium. Belch. Belgique. And uh, we've been in touch with him. He's coming to visit us in, well, not us specifically, but uh, us folks here in the Republic of Avalon in February. So we're looking forward to meeting him, and he's going to bring us some uh, chocolate from Belgium. Yeah. And uh, we and if, if people in Wales speak Welsh, what do people in Belgium speak? Belch. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. So Michael uh, ordered a CD for his dad. His dad's birthday was yesterday, and uh, because mainly, I guess, because one of the songs is called "Merrigan's." Merrigan's real. real. That's right. Of yeah. Course, Michael Merrigan, and he thought his father would really appreciate that. And his dad's originally from New- from Newfoundland, and uh, so they they uh, he got the CD for his dad because of track two, "Merrigan's Real." Yeah. 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 Nice fella. Yes. 
yeah, we're looking forward to meeting meeting Michael for sure in February. Mm-hmm. All righty. Well, why don't we? Let's say we just shove on here now, okay. and uh, we will keep keep the messages coming. Call the roar line area uh, country code one area code seven two four four two six eight one seven six and. Uh, Get a shout out, a, a season's greetings, a hello, whatever you want. You can also, uh, if you want to, send us an MP3. You can attach it to a, an email and send it to Republic of Avalon Radio at gmail dot com or Jim Fiddler at gmail dot com. Drop into the forum. Please do go over and and put your pin in the frapper map and uh, vote for us at Podcast Alley and. Aside from that, we'll just uh, shove on. What, what will we uh, get started with this week? I think uh, before we get around to the uh, to Jackie, what will we what will we get things rolling with? You think? Um, um, were you going to play Eddie first? Will we go right to Eddie? I, th- uh, I think it's a good. Yeah, you guys are going to love this. Okay, all right. We'll go. We'll go right to Eddie Mailbag, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy the show. We look forward to hearing from you and. Uh, that's it from us for, for for now. You're listening to Republic of Avalon Radio. Republic of Avalon Radio. You're with the roar! <laughs> well, hello out there to all you Republic of Avalon Radio listeners. This is your old friend, Eddie Mailbag. This week, I have something very interesting for you. And it's not joke of the week. Playboy and Braille? Sound interesting? Well, the following comes to us from the Venters.com blog on Friday, December 9th, 2005. And please try to bear with me on this one. I'll try not to laugh. And okay. Playboy in Braille by Ryan Sack. Most likely, you are surprised that such a thing exists. You are not alone. When I discovered Playboy in Braille years ago, it was in a box in an abandoned building. I found myself in a state of disbelief. The kind you feel when you are being chased by a leprechaun with a crossbow. It's normal to not want Playboy in Braille to exist. Because it's weird. It raises too many questions. Questions like, why is the government printing Playboy in Braille? And, how do you explain a naked woman to a pubescent, visually impaired teen? Ilka leans against a wall, wearing only a carpenter's tool belt. She's hot. Believe me. Katsumi arches unnaturally over a coffee table. You can see the whole thing. Anja's Mediterranean skin is a warm brown, like the craft paper Playboy you're reading with your finger. Playboy in Braille makes you think. It's exciting, but uncomfortable at the same time. Like Courtney Love, fixing your stove. Run your fingers over the pages, never really knowing if you're touching a gorgeous blonde or an essay by Tom Clancy. Was that Cindy Crawford's thumb or an interview with Gore Vidal? Frankly, it's whatever you want it to be. That's the glory of Playboy in Braille. Ahem. Ha 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 ha. Sorry. Let's just carry on. Ahem. This would be a terrible gift for the visually impaired, because you don't give the visually impaired a quarter of a decade old Playboy as a gift. But for you, put it out on the coffee table like I did. Owning Playboy in Braille is like having a day glow orange monkey that can curse in Farsi. It gets attention. People talk. You want Playboy in Braille? Playboy in Braille wants you. At least that's what I think it says. And, well, that's it for this week. This is Eddie Mailbag, signing out. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. I wonder if she's in Playboy. Republic of Babylon Radio. You're with the roar! <laughs>
Public of Avalon Radio, you're with the roar, and that was Out of the Rain from the CD Out of the Rain by Jackie Sullivan, and Jackie's here with me right now in the root cellar. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Uh, doing good. Doing good. We're just uh, getting all geared up for for Christmas and all that sort of stuff, and uh, you know, just just chilling out. How about, I hear you. What are you What are you at? I'm trying not to get caught up in all the hectic stuff of Christmas. Really trying not to do that. Trying to avoid the malls. Trying to stay home. You know why they call it the mall? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's a visual joke. Because you get mauled. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. So, we've got this uh, CD. That's a, that's a lovely track. That's gotten you some airplay around here. Yeah, it's been good to me. Uh-huh. And... Uh, so for a lot of folks, perhaps that was the first thing that you ever heard from from Jackie, and we're going to be playing something else later on. In fact, we were bouncing around an idea. What we might do is we might do a little thing together, perhaps, um, something that's not from the CD. I think it'd be brilliant. Yeah, just a little idea. It's not very often you get to do that. Usually when you're being interviewed by somebody, 
I don't so much look at this as being uh, interviewed as as uh, as much as just having a chat. Yeah, yeah. Sort of thing. So, alrighty. So that CD, you you put that out uh, in two thousand two. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about where you were coming from at the time. Like, let's let's go back in time. It's two thousand two, and and you've got this uh, project. You're let's say you're even still in the studio recording, and what's what's going on at that time. Well, I, I guess I had always kind of, you know, toyed with the idea of recording. And as a little girl, I would spend like hours in my room, you know, sitting on my bed with my guitar. And you'd always kind of have these big dreams of, you know, being on a stage and, and doing that whole thing. And um, when I I went to BC and I did a demo up there and recorded with a guy from Sault Ste. Marie up there and kind of got into performing around the interior of BC. And when I came home, I was performing solo. And then I... Um, I actually got a, a tour um, through the Music Industry Association. and So when I came on board, I thought, oh, God, you know what? I don't have a product, and uh, if there's ever a time when I'm going to record an album, now's the time to do it. So I um, jumped on the bandwagon as fast as I could because I wanted the product out by the time the tour was happening. And um, it didn't really make it, but I did do a lot of pre-sales, which was great. And uh, I guess it was just the kind of push I needed at the time, you know? Um, you always want to do something and then life just kind of gave it to me and uh, so I, I just did it and I went and got a loan <laughs> took out a bunch of money and you know and went for it that's that's the best way to do it yep. yeah and it was a shot in the dark you know I um, I didn't know really what I was doing and, and had a lot of help from a lot of different people and, um, and it was a lot of work a mm. lot a lot of work mm -hmm. um but you know what? It was really good to me. And uh, all original material? Yeah, well, there's ten tracks, and um, eight of them are original, actually. Okay. And um, one's a cover tune, and uh, one's a song um, given to me by Maureen Ennis. So eight, eight originals. So it wasn't bad for a first time, you know, crack at it. Yeah, well, even even the other two. Well, uh, was that an unheard of song from Maureen? Yeah, but the Ennis sisters have never recorded it, and it okay. was a song called Prairie Sky, so... Um, she co-wrote that with with um, Mark Murphy. Okay. And you know, like it was just that was a really nice thing for them to do. You know, a song that they had never recorded, and just to give that to me. Yeah. That got a lot of radio play too, and and did me really well. You know. And the cut. What what was the cover tune? The cover tune I decided to do. Well, you know, I come from um, a very Irish-oriented background up mm -hmm. on the southern shore, mm -hmm. and uh, when my parents first found out that I was recording an original album that wasn't all Irish songs. They were devastated. <laughs> devastated. And they're like, what? You're going to uh -huh. record your own songs? I'm like, yep. Yeah. That's what I'm going at. So um, I suppose in an attempt to appease them, I um, I decided to give them one track anyway and uh, went with a song called Never Will Marry, which I, I kind of did a different version of it. and um, A very good version, too. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, it was... Um, it was kind of like a, a trying to maintain some balance and uh, give them a little piece of it. Mm hmm. Yeah, we, we've got to do that. You know, it, it's funny, you know, when we make these things, folks, when we make these CDs, um, we're making them for you. Uh, now, I guess not all artists do because sometimes they're making them for the man. They're making them for the, for the major label. Some other people are making it from a perspective, I suppose, they're making it for themselves, but really, uh, the, the the music that you really love, you, uh, listener, um, just go through your stack of CDs and pull out your favorites, and I'd say there's a 99 chance out of 100 that those CDs were made for you, mm -hmm. not for the record company and not for their own ego. It was It was made for the listener. And of course, that comes from our life's experience. That's where we... You write songs. You don't. Uh, you don't just sing songs. You actually write songs. So, uh, actually, a little funny one for you. I did a couple of covers on my most recent CD, and I, I'd never done covers before. Everything I'd recorded all my life was all original stuff, and that kind of concerned me a little bit. You know, I'm recording these cover songs. What, what about that? And I came to the conclusion. Well, hmm. Maybe it's not necessarily that you write all the songs on the CD. Just don't wrong them. That's a good perspective, Jim. <laughs> so, I totally get that. Yeah. I get it. 
Yeah, and, totally. And I, I the, the the few that I that I threw on there, um, people seem to really like them. Uh, I did a version of Avalon, Roxy Music, and of course, yeah. we'll look at where we live. And this is Republic of Avalon Radio. Um, did a version of Fields of Gold by Sting, and had uh, Mike Walsh play some Illin Pipes on there. Yeah. And uh, covered a song by Jer Wolf, one of the one of the guys that was over from from Cork. So. That's where it's at, um, but it's it, it was the album, you know. And it was more important than me, and uh, so when when you actually released the album, um, let's let's just look at that for a moment because yeah. you got the thing done. It's yeah. in your it's in your it's in your little hands. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and, and what happened? What happened with it then? Well, I guess um, I had a, a CD release party, and I you know I was frightened to death because first of all, at that point, I don't think anybody really knew who Jackie Sullivan was, and. You know, not that the world knows me now, but, you know. Um, anyway, so I planned the CD release party, and I was frightened to death, you know, an hour before. I was like, please, God, let there be someone show up. Anyway, and the place w- the place happened to be packed, and, um, you know, life kind of took care of me from there. And, and um, you know, you kind of ride the wave, mm. you know, and there's ups and downs to it, and it's, it's definitely a lot of work. But... Um, I did, I did the release and then I started gigging and and um, trying to you know sell records and and um, from there I guess I've just been kind of plugging away at it and um, you know doing shows and trying to keep my name out there and 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 but on on a kind of a, a deeper level I guess trying to work hard a little bit more at just um, you know the craft of writing and trying to to push myself a little bit harder in that area uh-huh. you know and that's yeah. always really tough. Um, but yeah, I, I just, um, I've been very lucky, you know, and, and uh, I'm just grateful because I was surrounded with a lot of good people who helped me and, and but in the midst of that, you, you, you work your butt off too, you know, mm-hmm. you really do. Absolutely. And then there's the whole thing. We were, we were talking a while before we actually came out here to the root cellar. We were sitting at the kitchen table and talking about life, the universe and everything about music and, and uh, sort of the music industry and, and a bit about bit about some of the things that are happening these days stuff like the uh, the pod safe music network and uh, cd baby and just some some avenues that are available you know like we didn't uh, we didn't have the option of of paypal or putting a shopping cart on a website not that long ago and all these things are available now and we're just sort of talking about that kind of stuff and it's interesting for for people for any musicians listening but not even just music. Anything you're doing, you might as well enjoy what you're doing. And if you can podcast or blog, or um, create some some content for your websites, and you know, make the website more dynamic as opposed to just being static, something that you just poke up there and it sits there. You know, the returns uh, you, as you connect with more people and and you keep you know getting emails from people and they've heard your songs or whatever. The, the, the rule of thumb is love what you're doing and uh, if you love what you're doing but at the same time set it up so that it, it, you can automate things as much as possible right. so that you get that website you know you, you wake up in the morning and while you were asleep you got three emails you were just played on, on uh, two more podcasts and you just sold uh, three more CDs while you were asleep you know yeah Jim's just been educating me on that for the past hour <laughs> <laughs> well it's amazing sometimes I, I, I'm I'm amazed that uh, there's just not so much going on. Myself and Lillian have been talking about doing something. Um, actually, we're going to do it. And I've not mentioned it on the show here before, but we kind of want to make a, um, a hub, uh, create a place for people in Newfoundland and Labrador who want to start podcasts and they don't quite know where to start. Mm-hmm. And uh, we want to help get some other people expressing themselves and getting their music and their views and their jokes and their and their stories and whatever out to the rest of the world because there are millions of people all over the world who are listening to podcasts and a place such as this uh, Newfoundland and Labrador certainly has a lot of good songs and stories and jokes and all kinds of things so I agree mm-hmm a lot of good stories. Yeah. <laughs> a lot yeah. of comedy that's real fact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, the the comedy uh, which is your life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I don't have to work hard at that, no. Uh-huh. Um 
you 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 perform from time to time, yeah. and uh, but you're not. Uh, when, when was the last tour you you were, you were mentioning the tour you did? Yeah, well, I did a, a tour back in 2002 before the album came out, and then I uh, I did another one just May past a women and song tour, and we were talking about that earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was around the province too, and it was kind of a a, a notion and an idea that I created and. Um, yeah, I got funding for. So that was, you know, it was a lot of work, um, but, you know, it was really um, a great experience, too. And I guess, um, you know, you just learn a lot from stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was the last tour. And um, so, you know, hopefully there will be other shows. And I've had some good shows along the way, too, you know, that you get an opportunity to do, like, once-in-a-lifetime stuff. And uh, I know you've had many. Um, but, like, I've had stuff, like the Stan Rogers Folk Festival. Mm-hmm. You know, like a show like that that you'll, you know, it's a, for me, it's, it was once in a lifetime, you know, experience, right? Yep. So I, I've been lucky like that, you know, and hopefully there'll be more come my way. Well, everything, <clears throat> I, I really do think of things that way. I, I do think of, uh, I don't think of things like stepping stones. I do, exactly as you just said, I do think of everything as, as a once in a lifetime experience and sometimes... Sometimes you get to do things more than once, but even that's different. Like the Needfire show, first time was at the Princess of Wales Theatre, and then the next time was at the Royal Alex. Yeah. And it was a different theatre, it was a different experience, and even the same venue, uh, you might spin spin through in 2004 and play at uh, a particular venue. You come back the next year, that's a whole different crowd of people. The walls and the ceiling and the floor are the same. Yeah, but absolutely. But it's, it's a whole other, exp- it, it's another once in a lifetime experience in the same venue. Yeah, and those moments stick with you. Yeah. They really stick with you. Do you mm-hmm. have any moment? I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you have Do you have a, a moment? That well, I have lots of them. I, um, you know, for me, well, one that sticks out, I guess, and it's, you know, being in the presence of other kind of um, really talented people. When I did the Stan Rogers Folk Festival, I was on stage at one point with Gordy Sampson, and um, you know we were—it was all kind of in a songwriter circle format, you know. And I hadn't had the opportunity, and who knows, may never again have the opportunity to be on a stage like that with other, you know, musicians from, you know, Eastern Canada or you know all of Canada for that matter, you know, kind of doing your your intimate thing in a songwriter circle venue, and it was a it was a. It was a festival where people actually sat and listened, so they weren't hanging out in beer tents, and uh, you know, you didn't hear a whole lot of chatter. There was like st- cheers lined out in front of you in a very much concert format, you know, and people were quiet and attentive, and it, it was just brilliant. And you just you were you know you're in the moment, and I don't know, it was just really really neat. You don't forget that. No, you don't. You, you know, you can close your eyes and go right back there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and. Um, I just, you know, you're very lucky, and I just kind of try to soak that stuff up because stuff passes by so quickly. You know, you might never be there again, and and I just, you know, anything that comes my way like that, I just kind of jump at it, right? Seriously, you know, you don't know when you're going to get hit by that bus. No, and nobody know, you know, like if you're singing to a crowd, you don't know who's in the bloody crowd, Mm -hmm. right? It could be some guy from Toronto who wants to book you for a convention, or it could be, you know, anybody. Or it could be that person who, uh, you know, had had some sort of disconnect with their father or with their brother or whatever, and, and you might have written a song and you might have just, you know, patched up a little piece of, 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 uh, of another per- one little piece of another person's life, you know? Oh, absolutely. I um, and, and I, yeah, that stuff means more to me. Like I think from the whole album, there was one song that got the most requests wherever I went, and it was a song that I wrote about my grandfather who. Um, lived most of his life alone like my grandmother died suddenly and he spent his days literally sitting in front of the kitchen window at the kitchen table and he smoked a pipe and he would just sit there and stare out the window and you know like I always kind of looked at him and felt really sorry for him for a long long time and then it hit me one day and I said you know what he ain't by himself at all he really ain't by himself at all you know and so I wrote this song called She's With Me which was about his life and I guess me trying to kind of depict his life in that song and anyway wherever I went everyone would say can you sing that song she's with me can you sing that you know and it wasn't like the it, it it's not really a radio friendly tune but you know it just meant something to some people uh-huh. you know and, and people got it and and that that just goes that just for me that's better than um you know, selling 20 records, that's better than selling 20 CDs or whatever. 
Wow. Well, why don't, why don't we give that a spin here now? Yeah, we should do that. It's a pretty deep song, you know, and it's not meant to be a, um, a sad song. It's meant to be kind of an empowering song that, you know, he lived his life as if she were sitting right there with him at the kitchen table. And she was never, ever really gone. And so that's what this song is about. Okay, well, this is She's With Me. And you're listening to Republic of Avalon Radio. Here's another song from Jackie Sullivan. His memories linger on 
Republic of Avalon Radio. You're with the Roar. I'm Jim Fiddler, and I'm still with Jackie Sullivan. That was She's With Me. And it's interesting, I think, for, for people. Uh, we have listeners sort of all over the place. And uh, I guess everyone's used to hearing kind of a Nashville sound. Everyone's used to hearing uh, so, sort of st- stereotypical sounds, I suppose. You know, quote-unquote rock or quote-unquote pop or quote-unquote country or whatever. And... You know that one there isn't really either. You know, it, it, it's uh, that's a song written by a Newfoundland girl about her grandfather. Yep, small town girl. Uh huh. And what what is that small town girl writing these days? That's a good question. <laughs> I can't tell too many tales. Mm. Um. Well, you know, I have always struggled with the writing because I guess you're always your own worst critic, aren't you? But, um, you know, my songwriting tends to be deep, (laughs) I gotta say. And uh, there's a part of me that wishes that I could write very surface stuff, you know. Um, But it just doesn't seem to come so easily. Oh, yeah, baby, baby. (laughs) Yeah, 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 those Mm -hmm. kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the songs, yeah, are just um, pretty deep. And I guess lyrically... um, Lyrically intense. Does that make sense to you? I I uh, I've been in I've been in several tents, beer tents, and <laughs> pup tents, and all kinds. Of, I've been in tents, yes. <laughs> anyway, so I, I've um, I've been writing um, a lot more lately, and actually just trying to you know keep it regular in my life. Mm-hmm. And um, what are they about? Oh God! Well, you know, they're about things that are happening in my life, things that are happening in some of my friends lives and and you know trying to kind of do the third person thing so that it's not always about me anymore Uh um and um you know so yeah it's going well and i'm trying to do a bit of co-writing which has actually worked uh quite well in the last few weeks i've um done some co-writing i guess was in the last month with a couple of friends of mine which was so incredible it was it was a night where there was um candles lit and um we just had really good conversation, really good um, co-writing, and just had a few laughs and wrote a couple of songs called Clouded Like November and just a little letting go, and uh, it just really fit really well. So those songs are, are, are new and hopefully be recorded, you know, in the next year when I uh, finally get my act together and pull <laughs> it, you know. But uh, that's my goal. So I, it's um, it's slowly going, but it's going. Cool. Yeah, I, I've I've kind of fought that one myself for a long time. I've always been inspired by people, say like John Lennon and Bob Marley, and you know that kind of thing. And you know, when I pick my heroes, I I, I, I uh, tend to pick them out of people like Nelson Mandela and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So I mean, I, I've written all kinds of uh, uh, spiritually and and politically, socio politically inspired songs and and after a while you know you just have to shake yourself and say geez i wish i could just write you know in the summertime when the weather is hot or something absolutely something like that because mm-hmm. you you know the whole point is you're writing these songs and you don't want to as much as you want to inspire people and and uh maybe make people think and so on you, you also realize that that you're, you're there um music can be a great uplifting thing for people and, and sometimes people just need to dance I know. I wish I could write a dance tune. My songs are so, um, my songs are, well, you know, it's always easier to write a sad song anyway than it is to write a happy song. Do you find that? Well, it's pretty hard when you're out sort of uh, dancing on the street. It's pretty hard to sit down and write a song. When you write a song, it's always that something motivates you, some kind of, uh, some kind of mozzy day or some sort of uh, heaviness on your, something weighing on your heart or whatever. That Mm -hmm. tends to what tends to motivate us for some reason yeah absolutely so yeah i just i i wish i could do write you write write songs like that too that uh you know just are so simple and uh you know happy w- happy yeah absolutely mm. i wish i could stop this train track mind for just a second you know you know be someone who has like a seven iq and <laughs> but then again you know uh there's there's i think there's a lot of that out there yeah, there you is. Know? There is, yeah. That's where the singer songwriter comes in as opposed to the you know, the songwriter who just uh, 
it's more of a craft for them. It's funny, myself and Eric Bogle were talking about this. The whole, the difference between, I guess, inspirational writing and occupational writing. You know, um, mm. remember the guy on Sesame Street? I think I'm going to paint an eight. Remember him? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it's like, imagine, you know, you sit down and, at 9.05 in the morning and get out your pen and paper and say, I think I'm going to write a song. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not like that for me. Me neither. It's not like that for me. I don't think it would ever... I would never be able to be that robotic about it. It, You know, it, it, it's, it, takes, <clears throat> it takes a lot of skill and discipline to do that. Yeah, I know. I think some of the, some of the best songs we've ever heard were, were actually written like that. Yeah. Oddly enough. But uh, I just kind of... They just come to me out of the, out of the ether, you know? Uh, Jaja just puts his hand on your shoulder and says, you know, whoa, pony, I got something for you, and... What can, you, what can you do but take it? I know. It's there in you. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. You're the, you're the, the medium. Right. It's been given to you. You're just putting it on paper. Uh, literally, I don't call myself a songwriter. I call myself a song catcher. Yeah. And uh, I've, got, I've got songs that I can say, quite honestly, I might hold the copyright, but uh, that's because that's the way that the whole thing works. Who's going to not register the song? But I, I really, really... Um, there are songs that I really feel like I didn't write. I, I only found them. I know. <laughs> yeah, they've just come through you. Yeah? Yeah. I, I believe in that. I really do. Do you have... Uh, uh, we were talking before before we started talking here, uh, back out at the kitchen table, about possibly, instead of just playing a couple of songs from the CD, we were thinking about maybe um, Jackie and I recording something together and uh, that might be a fun thing to do. I would love to do that. Yeah. So what, 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 if, if we were to do that, what would be a good song you figure that we could do that with? Well, there's, um, there's, one that, there's a new one that I've written. I wrote it. When did I write that? I wrote it in March, actually. And um, I've um, performed it live and to kind of have a comfort level with it, you know? Okay. And uh, it's a song called Oceans Wide. And um, I was telling Lillian earlier that... Um, my fiance works in Africa, and uh, anyway, he um, he's gone for a month at a time or whatever. And uh, so I wrote this song for his thirtieth birthday, called "Oceans Wide." And um, if we if we talk about simplicity and um, you know complexity in a song, this is not the most complex tune I've ever written, but it's um, it's deeply rooted, I guess, and just talks about. Um, you know, surviving distance and time. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, it's a cool tune. And it's written in Dad Gad, which, of course, you know, we're both <laughs> knowledgeable about. <coughs> yes. And, um, yeah, I really like it. You know, I've gotten a good response from it, so I think it'd be a cool song to do. I was down, um, Mike Hanrahan was on, was on the show last week, and uh, one night he was playing down at Aaron's Pub, and uh, he had just done one song in, in Dad Gad. We call it Baghdad around here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what my friends say when they don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah and uh, he had just done one song in, in, in Baghdad, and then he was tuning in the standard tuning, and I just leaned over. I said, uh, ah, there you go, Mike Pye. You're doing, you're doing, you're doing what, the, what the Americans should be doing. He says, geez, what's that? I said, you're, you're getting the heck out of Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, okay, so this song is called Oceans Wide. Yep. And I've never heard it before, but what we're going to do, uh, Jackie is going to sing it and play it on the guitar, and we're going to record it here in the Root Cellar, and uh, over the next few days, I'm going to listen to it uh, a couple of times and uh, get comfortable with it, and uh, I don't know what I'll end up playing in it, I don't know, maybe a little bit of keyboards or some low whistle or... Uh, some a second guitar or, or I have no idea this is a completely uh, spontaneous sort of thing for both of us here it was completely unplanned we just sort of it just sort of came up at the kitchen table I feel really lucky I'm delighted it's 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 cool this is another one of those moments Jim yeah it's not a co-write but it's it's a uh, collaboration there's, yeah there's gonna be a version of this song you might record a, a fuller, more lofty version of it uh, for your next CD or whatever, but there's, there's going to be this little version kicking around, uh, and it's going to be up on the uh, on the archive. It's going to be it's going to be there for as long as that stuff is stored up at archive.org. So that the listeners of uh, this radio will hear for the first time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, why don't we just get to that? Um, 
thanks for for coming in and being part of Republic of Avalon Radio. I'm delighted. I just and, and you know what? It means an awful lot to me that you asked me to come in. Um, I just want to thank you and Lily for doing it. I think you're doing an unbelievable, amazing job. For anyone who doesn't know where the root cellar is, this is like <laughs> this is like the ultimate uh, secret of all time here. I tell you, and uh, not very many people in Newfoundland um, would you say know about this gin. Um, it's yeah. We don't. I don't have a shingle out over the door or anything. I like mean, like that. the root cellar, and you know, like, I record my own stuff and, and yeah. you know certain other things that I'm interested in in doing. But aside from that, I'm not quote unquote open for business. So, but this is, I'm just. I've been in shock since I came in here. <laughs> this is unbelievably brilliant, and uh, I just I'm delighted to even um, have you guys have me a part of it. I really am. Well, um, it, it just seemed normal to me because we we were. I think we played a, a, a benefit together down at Brody Malloy's. Mm, we did, yeah. And I was just uh, over, leaning against the bar, uh, sipping on my pint and, and listening to you and thinking, well, gee whiz, I think we, uh, both myself and Lillian thought it was a dead obvious, yeah, which is we'll get Jackie in, you know? Yeah. So Anyway, thanks a million. I just think you're doing a brilliant job. I really do. And... Um Hopefully, I'll be able to figure all this out now and do some of my stuff too. Yeah, cool. And and where can people go and and uh, and check you out? What's your what's your website? People can check it out at www.jackiesullivan.com and Jackie is J A C K I E JackieSullivan.com. And um, there's a guest book there, and uh, of course, don't sign it like my mother has signed it. But uh, send me a nice little email. Let me know what you think of the tracks and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, that'd be great. And uh, by the time people hear this, uh, Jackie assures us that uh, there will be some way for you to buy the, the CD from her website. I hope so, yes. God willing. Well, we can help you with that. If uh, w- you know, Be hook or be crook, we'll, we'll get you sorted out. You can have a look at what we're doing, and it's working for us. And, and to do the same thing, it's, it's really easy. And for, for people out there, it's, it's really... This stuff isn't as difficult as some people would make it out to be. So, mm. And we can do it ourselves, you know. We can go the independent route and uh, make it work. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and you're kind of testimony to that, hey? Yeah, I'm not a millionaire and I'm not world famous, but uh, I'll tell you what, I, uh, I'm i warm, I'm dry, and I'm happy. Yeah, and that's all that matters, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks again for coming in, and uh, this is Jackie Sullivan, humbly uh, accompanied by yours truly, and the song is called... Oceans Wide. And you're listening to Republic of Avalon Radio. Some days the nights are long Some days we are so strong We find a way to make it through each day Never fall asleep chance to say I love you Even though we're far apart You always have my heart Inside your hand we're lock and key I found a place I always want
Republic of Babylon Radio. Hey everybody, this is Slough, and you're listening to The Roar, Republic of Avalon Radio. Here's a tune that I co-wrote and produced that features my good buddy Jim Fiddler, along with a bunch of other Podsafe Music Network artists. All proceeds from the sale of this song go to UNICEF, so if you haven't already done so, please visit the website and find out how you can hear it and purchase it. Go to www... <coughs> I mean, triple U dot... <laughs> podsafeforpeace.org Here's If Every Day Were Christmas by Podsafe for Peace. First winter snow outside my window Feels like that time again to me The mistletoe a Christmas show And the lighting of that famous Christmas tree yeah. People are shopping for their loved ones And making plans for a Christmas
Well, there it is, folks. That's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the ride. We will be working diligently over the next week, putting together episode 25 for you for Christmas, for something to listen to during the season. In the meantime, let's just say uh, from myself. And myself. Take care of each other. Uh, enjoy the holidays. And uh, be good to each other. And we'll catch you next week right here on Republic of Avalon Radio.